Well, for five months now, every time you get a church email, you see this tagline at the top saying, we are still a community. Well, the pandemic stretches on and it's still not under control, still bringing so much loss and anxiety and fear and stress to our daily lives and to almost everything in the world around us. It's getting harder and harder to say that tagline with much enthusiasm or optimism. If we are still a community, what kind of community are we becoming? I believe deeply that it's still true. We are still a community, but let's be honest. We are often a weary and stressed and sad community. On behalf of the pastors and elders and staff and council, I want to share a word with you, hopefully to encourage you, but also to be realistic and to give you a sense of what lies ahead of us as a church. We have four main areas that we think are central to being church. As you might know, we're living into a new structure to reflect that. Those areas are worship, incarnational witness, community building, and faith formation. The pandemic does not stop us from doing any of those things. We are still a church that worships God, gives witness to God's work in the world, strengthens our connections with each other, and helps us grow in faith. It doesn't stop us, but it does make us step back a few steps and look at the bigger landscape and approach the task in a new way, maybe from a new angle. In all four of these areas, we're trying on some new things, new ways of connecting, new ways of meeting needs. Our elders continue to team up with the pastors to tend to those four areas of church life and, and ask what is working, what isn't working, what old treasured forms might need to be laid down so that we can pick up some new treasures. I know that one question on everyone's mind is when are we going to get back together again to worship in person at 1600 College Avenue? When will we fill the sanctuary with singing again? That's really hard to know right now. So much depends on our country's ability to get the virus under control and to develop safe and effective vaccines and treatments, and we're not there yet. And one big unknown right now is the return of thousands of college students to our community. We don't yet know the near and long-term impact of that. Right now, it's crystal clear that we cannot gather indoors in large groups, and we cannot sing in large groups, especially not indoors. If we did, we would not only endanger the participants, we would endanger the whole community, especially the most vulnerable among us. Regardless of what some other churches may be doing, that is the clear consensus of the scientific and medical community, and we take their recommendations seriously. The sacrifices we make are not for selfish reasons, but for the love of our sisters and brothers, and for the love of the neighbor and stranger and even enemy. This is the Jesus way. Put self aside for the other. It's how Jesus lived. It's how Jesus taught us to live. Plain and simple, wearing masks, keeping physical distance, avoiding large crowds, and respecting public health is how we are obedient to Jesus right now. Of course, we all want to come back and gather in person for worship and have Sunday school and fellowship meals and block parties and retreats and concerts. And we will do that if and when we can while obeying Jesus' commands to love our neighbors. It's perfectly fine to lament to be sad, to, to grieve, not gathering in person. In fact, being willing to carry this grief is in itself an act of love for our neighbor. It's also important to remember that while we're not gathering physically in worship, we can still engage in worship and we can still care for and support one another and be church 100% even during a pandemic. 
Some people have the good fortune of not being terribly inconvenienced by all this. Their jobs are easily done from home, young children aren't in the mix, or they're already homeschooling, or they're retired. But know this, there are others among us who are suffering immediate and prolonged loss and grief and trauma. There is an emotional and relational and financial and physical toll on many people, including families juggling work and school and childcare and not seeing an end in sight. Those of us who suffer less have an opportunity, dare I say an obligation, to reach out to others in love and care and support. We can all do that with or without a church program to organize it. Notice who your neighbors are, church people or not, and keep your church friends on your radar. Pick up our photo directory and pray your way through it. See if God's Spirit draws your mind toward certain households, people who might have an especially heavy load to bear right now, and pick up your phone and call them. Send them a handwritten note. Visit them on their porch or deck. Take them some food or some flowers. The end goal here at Parkview is not just to get back to normal. We can do better than normal. We can look at the world the way it is right now and ask ourselves in a new and fresh way, how can we be church today for the world that we have right now? So, Sunday after next, we begin a short worship series that we're calling Rewilding the Church, what church is about when it's all stripped away. We will spend time in worship and in conversation with each other about those things that are foundational and elemental to being the church God has in mind. That series will go on for four weeks and will include three congregational conversations online as well as opportunity for safe, in-person, smaller group conversations. Those four weeks will end with our church retreat weekend. And no, sadly, we're not going to Camp Brethren Woods this year. But we are already planning some retreat-like activities for Labor Day weekend, September 4 to 6. So keep some time open on your calendars that weekend and we will find ways to connect with each other and have some fun together. And yes, there will be a variety show, but in a different form. So just practically speaking, how are we making decisions about all these things? Who decides when it's time to gather physically and worship again? Who determines when to cancel something or plan something new? Is there a process? Is there a timeline? Who makes the final call? Well, as you know, the church is neither a dictatorship nor a pure democracy. We are a community of faith. We work together as a community to discern the way forward. We depend on the Spirit's guidance and courage to discover the will of God and to follow it. We as pastors are not making these decisions on our own or in isolation. We've had several meetings of what we call the the COVID summit, which included council members, elders, pastors, and other staff and other people with particular expertise to help us make some wise decisions and chart a kind of path to follow. Another process we put into place more recently as certain activities or scenarios are considered is to run it by a six person COVID reference group. This group does not make final decisions but gives honest advice and asks questions and helps establish best practices. So when some activity or use of the building is considered by staff or council or any committee or program team, that is run by the reference group for feedback, for questions, cautions, recommendations. That group consists of Merle Mast, vice chair of council, and to our benefit, also a community health professional, and John Wenger, who's also a local physician, Anna Arias, a parent and a mental health professional, Brent Yoder, a 
parent and a building specialist, Seth Kime, who's a wise and thoughtful young person, and myself as pastor. And as I said, the elders continue to confer with each other about those four areas of church life and keep trying to ask good questions of ourselves. And council continues to meet online on our regular schedule to take care of the business side of things and be good stewards. We are facing some daunting challenges as a church in worship, program, and finances. Your giving remains strong and we are so grateful but there are challenges ahead. We, we need to keep paying on the mortgage for our fresh air repair and renovation project from two years ago. And we're losing significant rental income this year from outside groups. But we do not worry. We trust God. And we trust you to remain with us on the journey. You certainly have so far. You have been generous. You've been compassionate. You've been responsive. You've shared your gifts, your ideas, your time, your finances. We need all those things and we need all of you to stay on mission, to stay on God's mission. And by God's grace and with God's strength available to us by the Spirit of God, we will stay on the journey and we will be faithful to God's call. Please stay with us. Please stay safe. Please care for each other. Peace. God be with us all.